The Johnson Wax Program, Words at War with Clifton Fadiman. Johnson's Wax for Home and Industry, in cooperation with the Council on Books and Wartime, proudly presents Words at War, bringing you dramatizations of the most representative books to come out of this great world conflict. With us again to introduce our program is the well-known radio personality, author and critic, Clifton Fadiman. Tonight, the spotlight of words at war swings to the far east and falls upon that reawakening giant of the Orient, China, ancient nation whose modern destiny is the vital concern of us all. After Jack Costello brings you a brief message from our sponsor, I'll tell you more about tonight's program. No program of better car maintenance is complete if it overlooks the paint job. Even if your car sits idle for days at a time, the finish needs looking after Dirt and road grime cause deterioration if they're not removed. And a rough finish collects more dirt and grime. You can give your car a finish that's satin smooth, that sparkles like new, with the easy-to-use, double-purpose Johnson's Car New. You may already know that Car New both cleans and polishes in one application. But most people don't really appreciate how easy the job is until they try Car New themselves on their own cars. Car New is a liquid polish. You rub it on, let it dry, wipe it off. Tie a string around your finger now as a reminder to buy a package of Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. Will you take it from here, Mr. Fadiman? Thank you, Jack. Tonight, we base our words at war on two new books. The first is Heaven Below by E.H. Clayton, which shows us China through the eyes of an American missionary and educator who lived there for 30 years. The second book is China Looks Forward, written by Sun Fo, whose father was Sun Yat-sen, founder and first president of the Chinese Republic. And together these books add up to a new and startling picture of China, combining the perspectives of an admiring foreigner and a sharply critical Chinese. Once we considered China none of our business, now we know that what happens in China today and tomorrow is the business of everybody in the world. Is China really a democracy? Is it possible for China to go fascist? What does China propose to do about Japan and the post-war world? Just what kind of people are these Chinese anyway? Let's get the answers. First, let's meet the common man of China through the eyes of E.H. Clayton, author of Heaven Below. Hangzhou, 120 miles from Shanghai. A city that is built on the shores of a lake three miles across, against a background of wonderful hills and mountain peaks that provide some of the most beautiful sunsets in all the world. This is heaven below. We've come to teach at Wayland Academy here. We've established a family in a house which, although without the blessings of American planning, is moderately comfortable. We've engaged servants and... No. Oh, Pardon me, someone at the door. Yes? Mr. Clayton, I am neighbor, Mr. Lee. Oh, how do you do? I've been intending to drop over and... Uh, one dollar, uh, uh, fifty cents. I beg pardon? One dollar, uh, fifty cents for red candles and incense. Yes, but look here, I didn't order red candles and incense. Mr. Clayton, you have uh, chicken in yard, also rooster. Yes, I have, but... Uh... Your uh, rooster flies out of yard, sits on top of my house. This is a sign of great evil. Huh? It is necessary to burn that candle and incense to ward off evil. One dollar, fifty cents. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, uh, here. A dollar, fifty cents. Uh, thank you very much. Good day, Mr. Clayton. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Lee. Oh, uh, yes? I'm very glad to pay for the candles and incense this time, but I think I ought to tell you this. 
My rooster is a foreign rooster, and in my country, people do not consider it a sign of evil for a rooster to fly up and sit on a house. Oh, people most ignorant in your country. Uh, no, no, it's just that foreign roosters don't bring evil. So if my rooster flies up on the top of your house again, you'll have nothing to worry about. Oh, this uh, could be so. I assure you it is true. I will tell neighbors of this, Mr. Clayton. Oh, thank you, Mr. Lee. I uh, keep one dollar fifty cents. Uh, of course, you've already bought the candles and incense. Um, good day, Mr. Lee. Uh, good day, Mr. Clayton. <laughs> Anything can happen in China. Well, gradually we learned that our children were being called little foreign devils by the neighbors. As head of the house, I was Mr. Foreign Devil. And my wife was scarcely flattered to learn that she was commonly referred to as old foreign hag. <clears throat> but our sense of humor was certainly equal to this. And it didn't lessen our growing affection for the people who were our neighbors. Uh... Wait a minute. What's that music? Let's have a look outside. Oh, recognize the tune? There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. Uh, what's the occasion? Well, it happens to be a funeral procession. The local band leaders come into possession of some American sheet music and has selected hot time as an appropriate dirge. As I said before, anything can happen in China. Now I uh, want to tell you about a dinner I attended. The Academy was giving a banquet for one of our colleagues this evening. We uh, fall into conversation with a Chinese teacher on our right. Uh, Professor Kai... Is it the custom to give such lavish dinners whenever a member of the faculty leaves the school? Mr. Clayton, surely you understand the purpose of this banquet? Well, of course. Professor Ling has received a more attractive offer from another school. Mr. Clayton, Professor Ling is not leaving the school to accept a more attractive position. He is being dismissed. He's being dismissed? He hasn't another offer? None at all. Well, then, why this elaborate tribute to him? Mr. Clayton, in China, nothing is more important than faith. One must save faith at all costs. If Professor Ling were to be called into the principal's office and bluntly told that he was being dismissed, he would lose faith. This way, he saves faith. We all pretend, and he pretends, that he is resigning for something better. Oh, but nobody is actually fooled. Nobody is fooled. Uh, well, perhaps I'll learn in time. I thought so, Professor Ling, greatest of good fortune in his new post. Professor Ling. Professor, Professor Ling. Ling. Professor Ling. Good evening, Professor Kai. Oh. Uh, good evening, Jean. Uh, Mr. Clayton, a young friend of mine, Mr. Jean. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Jean? Mr. Clayton. Oh. Uh oh, you will pardon my gloves? Of course, I'm sorry. You, uh, you've injured your hand? Oh, no. No. But you wear... Uh... Of course. They have come all the way from America. Do you not admire them? Uh, uh, they're very nice, I'm sure. Yes. You will excuse me, Professor Kai. Of course, Jean. Mr. Clayton, to meet you has been the great honor of my life. Uh, thank you, thank you. Mr. Clayton, Professor Kai. A young man of promise, Mr. Clayton. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. But, uh, Professor Kai, you'll excuse me, but was that young man wearing rubber gloves, or am I... Of uh... course he was wearing rubber gloves. In heaven's name, why? Oh, that is easily explained, Mr. Clayton. He wears them everywhere. You see, that young man is a student nurse in the hospital. He is provided with rubber gloves for his work. Oh, oh I see. But look here, Professor Kai. Does he have to wear the rubber gloves to a banquet? Of course. 
Sorry, Professor, to be so dull, but why? Mr. Clayton, let me explain. To that young man, his rubber gloves are his emblem of office. Mm. If he did not wear them on all occasions, how would people know that he held a position of such importance? Is it necessary that they do know? It is important to that young man, Mr. Clayton. It is his way of preserving faith. Faith. I see. A toast to Professor Lin. Long life, many children, continued success in his new career. Professor oh. <laughs> We'll uh, take a stroll this morning along the streets of Hangzhou, the model city of China. Oh, by the way, I just remembered an anecdote. It seems the Generalissimo once came to Hangzhou, our heaven below, and was disturbed by the condition of the streets. He went to the mayor and demanded that something be done at once to clean it up. The mayor called up the chief of police and soundly berated him. The chief of police at once called up his first assistant and denounced him roundly. The assistant immediately called. But all I wanted to prove was this. The art of passing the buck is not an American invention. It's an old Chinese custom. Oh, uh, oh but wait, here's an interesting neighbor of ours, Mrs. Yun. Uh, good day, Mrs. Yun. Good day, Mr. Clayton. And, uh, Mr. Yun? <coughs> He's looking very well, Mrs. Yun. Yes, he is in good health. <coughs> Well, it has been very nice seeing you, Mrs. Yun. Good day, Mr. Clayton. Come, Mr. Yun. Nothing much of interest for that meeting, hmm? Except that Mrs. Yun's husband happens to be a pig. Oh, once he was a man, of course, but he died a sinner, and according to information given by Mrs. Yun, uh, rather by the Buddhist to Mrs. Yun, uh, he was reincarnated as a pig. Mrs. Yuan, as a good wife should, is looking after him now. Pig that he is. Are you amused? Aren't these naive, childlike, superstitious people? Yes, aren't they? Yet I saw these same people resist the Jap invaders that came to heaven below. Resist? Is that the word? I saw them live for days on a mouthful of rice. I saw them bayoneted for no reason. I saw their women tied to the ground to await the pleasure of a new Jap regiment. I saw them starving, though they were, fight the Japs like demons, fight with sticks and stones against machine gun and cannon, not for days, but for years. What manner of people are these? What paradox is this? Whose fault is it that ignorance, superstition, poverty, starvation has been fastened upon them for years? It is our fault. It is the fault of ourselves, the Chinese. Yes, we pretend to have a democracy. We pretend to be the people's party. We, the party, represent less than 1% of the people. We do almost nothing to combat the mass ignorance of the people. We who fight dictatorships, we function as a dictatorship. Good heavens, who dares to speak like that? He'll be arrested. No, no, not he. But he's denouncing the Nationalist Party, the Generalissimo himself. Yes, he is a member of that party. He is close associate to the Generalissimo. He dares to speak that way, to blame China, to call the party a dictatorship? He is the only man in China who can dare to speak that way. He speaks his truth and is not afraid. He is the son of... Sun Yat-sen, the founder of first president of Chinese Republic. He fears no one. That is Sun Fo. This is Clifton Fadiman speaking. Tonight on the Johnson Wax program, Words at War, we are bringing you a dramatization based upon two important books about China. Heaven Below, written by an American missionary and educator, E.H. Clayton, and China Looks Forward, by Sun Fo, 
whose father was Sun Yat-sen, founder and first president of the Chinese Republic. We've been meeting the common people of China, a lovable people held fast in the grip of age-old superstition, ignorance, and poverty. Yet these are the people who have given the world a new concept of heroism. What do they have that is worth fighting so desperately for? Who is to blame for their plight? We've heard Sun Fo fix the blame upon the Chinese leaders themselves. Heard him charge that China, which fights dictatorships, is itself a dictatorship. 